Could you explain what the Cosmic Background Explorer was? Yeah, the Cosmic Background Explorer was a satellite launched by NASA in 1989 to measure the heat radiation of the Big Bang. So two th things to measure about it. Uh, one is what is the color? How bright is that heat radiation at each different wavelength? And the uh, Big Bang radiation is bright at wavelengths of about one millimeter. So in between what your microwave oven sends out and what you can see with your eye. The second app measurement of it was to see if it comes to us uh, with equal brightness from all directions. So it almost is exactly the same everywhere, but not quite. And the fact that it's not quite the same brightness everywhere means that the, the Big Bang material, whatever it was, was not uniform. And it was just enough different from perfectly uniform that the uh, density variations in the early universe could cause the formation of galaxies and stars and planets and we would not be here without them. So it turns out to be quite important. How could the satellite be used to measure the heat radiation from the Big Bang? And how did your work help to cement the Big Bang theory of the universe? The COBE satellite measures the microwave radiation from the early universe with two methods. Uh, one is by basically uh, having a thing called a Fourier spectrometer, which uh, breaks up the in coming radiation into uh, wavelengths to be measured and we compare it with a simulation of the early universe called a black body. So that's a big piece of black plastic that we put in front of the instrument to compare with the actual measurement. So that's how we know that we got exactly what was predicted by the Big Bang Theory. Then uh, we had uh, microwave receivers uh, that uh, operate more like your television or your radio. Um, that receive the microwaves from early times and uh, measure how bright they are in each different direction. What does the James Webb Space Telescope do? The James Webb Space Telescope is the world's premier space telescope. It was launched in December of 2021, and it is designed to observe the most distant galaxies and black holes we can possibly find, looking as far out in space and as far back in time as we can get with a telescope. So we are looking for the first galaxies that grew, the first black holes that grew from the Big Bang material. Closer up to home, we want to see how the stars around us are being born as we speak. You know, several stars per year are being born in our home Milky Way galaxy. And the uh, way in which they are born is quite mysterious because they occur inside dusty clouds of glowing gas out there, which are beautiful to look at, but they prevent us from seeing the formation process. So the Webb telescope is able to show us the insides of those dust clouds where the new stars are being born with planets. Very close to home, we are looking at the, all of the planets in the solar system from Mars on out to see how do they work and uh, perhaps to understand a little bit more about the formation of the solar system. And uh, we are looking for planets around other stars. We have observations in progress for many planets that pass in front of their stars. So this is called transit spectroscopy. We can now measure the presence of an atmosphere in the planet around another star. So of course, everybody wants to know, are we alone? And uh, we do not know, uh, but we can at least begin to answer the question, are there planets that could potentially harbor life? So that's uh, what we're working on just in a very short version uh, with the Webb telescope. What surprises were you able to found so far? So far, we have found that the first galaxies grew much more quickly than people expected. And we don't know yet why we were wrong. Uh, so the first galaxies are brighter, hotter, and bigger than we expected, and they happen sooner than we expected. So this is a mystery, but it's a wonderful mystery for a science to address. What are some of the biggest unanswered questions in cosmology today, and how do you see your work contributing to understanding these questions? The biggest questions these days are, what do the dark matter and the dark energy do? And of course, we may never be able to answer what they are, but we at least can find out what they do. How did the first galaxies grow from that early primordial material? Uh, why and how do we have a black hole in the middle of every big galaxy? And how did they possibly get as large as they are? When I say large, I mean up to billions of times the mass of the sun. So no one knows exactly how that could have happened, although we have observations and we have many ideas. Those, I think, are the biggest questions. There's also a temptation to think that maybe we can find out that there's some new kind of dark matter or some new kind of dark energy that might explain some of the discrepancies that we're seeing in the data. This is called the cosmic tension because we have different ways of estimating the rate of expansion of the universe and they don't quite agree. 